My name is Jonathan Gillum, and this is The Experts. And welcome back. I missed Monday's show because, well, I just didn't feel like doing a show. <laughs> and the news, the news really on Sunday just didn't really hit me. But here we are. It's now Tuesday. And we have seen all kinds of craziness over the past day. Uh, let's start with, let's start with the ridiculous. And then let's get into well, the main thing that I want to talk about tonight, which is, and I've kind of, I haven't avoided this uh, topic, but I haven't really touched on the Hunter Biden computer that much because I was waiting to hear more about it. Um, there, And I knew there was going to be more, there was going to be something that grabbed me eventually. And sure enough, uh, I'm going to talk about that uh, in today's show. So, but let's start with, talking about if you have not heard Jeffrey Tubin from CNN and the New Yorker I think it's a New York, no New York magazine or New Yorker one of the two but definitely CNN um somebody who I've never liked I've never been on uh, CNN with him but uh, watching him on television it's he's just the most well he was I don't know if he's ever going to be back on television the most smug individual uh just an absolute you know, kind of a jackass. I mean, he always saw it. You know, if you're if you're smart enough to understand what to look for in these people and how they analyze stuff. See, here's a big thing that you have to realize on when you're watching network news or listening to the radio. How people analyze stuff. Now, listen, I can be snippy and and say things that are, you know, kind of slap in somebody's face on Twitter and, and on social media. And I've even gotten into debates and arguments with people on television before. But when I'm analyzing something, I try to stay as neutral as possible. That's what I, I've always, you know, grown up thinking that the news the news actually is. But we know now that that's well, we know now that's not what the news is. It makes you wonder if the news was ever actually that. You know, when you go back to Walter Cronkite or Tom, Tom Brokaw or all these other people that were, you know, in the news, how much of the news back in the day was as, uh, I don't, I don't what's the word I'm looking for here. I want to choose the perfect word. How much of the news back then was compromised by ideological leftist like it is now, e even, you know, now Fox news, for instance, Fox news, Refused to do the Hunter Biden. I'm, I'm reading, uh, uh, you know, on, I think it was on Mediate. Remember, I go to all the different websites and I look to see, because sometimes the liberal websites, of course, are going to, well, mo all of them are liberal, but they're going to say things about Fox. Of course, Fox wouldn't report. Uh, and so that's kind of interesting to see their perspective of that. But also, you can start to see where the lies form and where the media is being pushed one way or the other. But you wonder... Uh, and as I was going to say with Fox News, that they they didn't even want to cover and they passed on the story about Hunter Biden's computer uh, until after the New York Post printed it. Now, remember, the New York Post and Fox News are both owned by Rupert Murdoch. So you got to wonder, does that make the, the, the New York Post more conservative? Does it make them uh, less concerned about... Uh, controversy like Fox News could be, you know, Fox, their image, they like to stay a uh, squeaky clean white conservative. Uh, and so, it, but it's fake. You got to remember that it's all fake. It's, it's an act. It's not really, it's like uh, the Republican establishment, right? It's not really conservative. They're rhinos, uh, Republicans in name only, but they, that's their shtick. That's how they feed their families and that's how they afford big huge mansions and the cars that they want and these types of things they, they lie it's a game they're not really conservative they don't really care one way or the other to tell you the truth look at john mccain uh ben sassy all these types of people you know that's the uh martha mcsally that's who they really are okay they're not really conservatives uh bush 41 and bush 43 you know and you can say what you want 
I, I even wonder sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, when I look at who worked for Ronald Reagan, I have to ask, what was the reality of that conservatism then versus now? You know, the, the guy who was Ronald Reagan's chief of staff is now the CEO and editor of the, the Washington Post, one of the most liberal publications that there is. He's also head of the Reagan Foundation, along with Paul Ryan, the Murdoch family, and all these other leftists. You see, that's what I'm going to get into in a little bit. You can't even trust this stuff. I don't know how I got into this, but when when we look at the reality, oh yeah, this is what it is. When I look at the reality of, and I'm wanting to share this with you, I want you to understand this. When you look at how people analyze things on the news and on radio, you really can tell by and large, and I'm saying this as somebody who's been in the background and watched these people and thought to myself when I saw them on TV, man, this person's smug, or is this just an act? And then I, I go and I actually see these people live. I'm right there with them. And sometimes even on television, like Brian Stelter, you know, I used to see Brian Stelter all the time on the, on the television. I used to think to myself, who is this guy? How did he get the position that he has? And does he believe his own crap? Does he believe that he knows all the things that he spouts on when he's in front of the camera? Because it's, it's not like he knew that from his own experience. He was told by somebody five minutes before he came on camera about what the reality of his, is of a situation. And most of the time, the reality that he's getting is formulated into, it's an act. They're going to spin it and make it more liberal or left or some way, shape, and form now to blame Trump. But when I saw him and was with him online or on set, and I've told the story before, you know, this guy gets up there wearing shorts with, you know, this is on set, folks. This isn't it, uh, when you're doing Skype or, you know, Zoom for some kind of interview. This was on set. Myself and Harry Houck were in a suit. This guy comes up wearing shorts a button-up shirt, and a sports jacket. And we're talking about the prison break that happened up in, in New York several years ago. Why he's talking about that, I have no idea. He has no experience in that. And he's eating Cheerios out of a cup in the microphone, crunching next to Harry and I, who's Harry's a former Marine and NYPD detective. And we're looking at each other. We look at this guy and they're like, okay, we're 10 seconds, you know, to, uh, we come back and he puts the cup down, dusts his hands off, takes a swig of water, <laughs> crunching in the microphone, swallows. And then they go to him and he does the majority of the interview, just coming to me and uh, to Harry and I for just a few seconds before we go to another break. And things like this are what I see from behind the scenes that you don't see from your couch. However, I know if I talk to the majority of you, you probably say that Brian Stelter is an idiot and he looks and acts like somebody. You can tell that it's an act. Well, that's the way he is in real person. It's an act. He's just a goofy fat kid in a grown-up body. Well, not even look, really look like a grown-up. But he has no experience in anything. So when I used to see Jeffrey Tubin on television, I used to see the same thing. And then I saw him... In person, I was never, I don't remember, I don't think I was ever on set or where I was actually on set with him. I might have been, but he's that unfor, he's that forgettable that I, I don't really remember. But I have, I do remember seeing him and thinking to myself, this guy is one of the most smug individuals I've ever seen. Now, not saying that you have to be good looking and that being smug is, uh, you know, if, if you're a, a strikingly handsome man or beautiful woman, that it's okay to be smug. I'm not saying that. But this guy walked around as though he was Elvis Presley, and he's not. So when it turns out, if you haven't heard this, they were having a Zoom meeting, and this is the thing that's being lost in this whole thing, okay? They're rehearsing in this Zoom meeting. This is what no one is focusing on. Of course, the media is not focusing on it because this is how fake they are. They were actually practicing uh, 
what it, uh, the interviews, right? So this isn't about analysis. This is about an act. They're practicing as though it's a play for the upcoming uh, debates and <clears throat> election night. And they're role-playing. So they would break off into different groups. And Jeffrey Tubman, of course, was going to be um, something that has to do with the courts. And they're, you know, so they can throw this stuff around. They're, they're role-playing is what they're doing. They break off into groups to go, you know, there was like military and uh, legislative and different groups. And, and they go and discuss things amongst themselves. And then they come back and I guess they're going to round table it. I don't know exactly. But the fact is the entire Zoom meeting is uh, skit preparation. That's what it is. It's no different than actors who practice on a Broadway stage before the show. That's what they're doing in these Zoom meetings. That should alarm everybody. Nobody's talking about that. But the fact is, that's how fake the news is. Never did anyone I know <clears throat> go through any type of rehearsal with CNN or with Fox, you know, because I wasn't, you know, one of the main people, right? And things were a little bit different in 2015, uh, I stopped being on television as much in 2016 when the election spun up. It's as if Satan's demons just took over media and they just completely went 100% on Trump 100% of the time. But I never saw any of these types of rehearsal meetings. I'm sure they existed. But the way this one was described is it's literally like a Broadway production and they're just practicing their lines, their outrage, practicing how far left that they can lean before it's too much and how much they can actually say in their analysis not to push too far to the right. That's what this is. So they come back or they go to their breakout groups and apparently, I guess Jeffrey Tubman was overtaken by desire and lust and decided to go ahead and please himself uh, not realizing he had not turned his camera off. And I guess when he put his phone down or something, the camera was there and everybody was able to see uh, him giving himself the SmackDown, WWF style, or WWE, sorry. It's now WWE. I keep forgetting that. I grew up in the WWF uh, era, World Wrestling Federation. Now it's the World Wrestling something else. So you don't see, you see little blurbs of it here and there. And you saw the MSNBC with Rachel Maddow and Chris Hayes laughing about it, of, of course, because um, they don't take that stuff seriously because that's how demonic these people are. They're not really, you know, Jeffrey Tubin, I guess, said that he was going to take some time off for personal reasons. You know, <clears throat> if I was the editor of one of these things that, I don't really call them journalism or news agencies, but these things like CNN and whatever else it is that he works at, I would have come out saying, this guy's fired, man. He's a idiot. I mean, <laughs> that's the equivalent of a SEAL uh, or a special forces guy uh, sitting in there cleaning his weapon and forgetting to take the rounds out of his weapon and shooting somebody else. That That's the equivalent of what Jeffrey Tubin did today from a media standpoint. So, so that being said, uh, that's the reality, okay, of who you're dealing with. That's the reality of who is in media and who runs media. And so when you sit there on television or on your couch and you're watching this stuff or you're listening on your radio and you're like, this freaking dude doesn't know what they're talking about or this woman seems like she's a narcissist, the chances are that they are 10 times worse in person, Right. Here's another one. See, it's it's not just. Remember, this is majority of the stuff is an act, okay? It's an act, and Rush Limbaugh, who is not an act, true conservative, probably uh, responsible for the emergence of the Republican Party as we know it now. And when I say the Republican Party, I'm talking about true conservatives, not the establishment. Rush Limbaugh, if you don't know, you should research him and what he did for this nation from talk radio. I mean, 
talk radio was and, and has come back again, but talk radio has changed the face of politics because it gives people an opportunity. And that's one of the things I love about talk radio versus doing a podcast. I mean, I love being on a podcast and having all my time to do what I, I think I need to do and say, and not worried about being censored or pressured by sponsors. I'll never take a sponsor on this show that's going to try to pressure me into not saying what I feel should be said. But in radio, you can't always count on that, right? But Rush Limbaugh really did uh, change how conservatism, the strength of conservatism and the unity. Now, we've since gotten away from that, mainly because of uh, of the Republican establishment and because a lot of people in radio do not have any experience, not saying that Rush had a massive amount of experience in anything but radio, but he was a true conservative and he, he was a true guide, a guide for conservatives. <clears throat> so Michael Savage, I've always thought, you know, I could never really listen to Michael Savage because he is very similar I know a lot of people are going to be out there and they're going to disagree with me on this, but I've, I've never really been able to listen to the guy because it's an act. <clears throat> it's, he may say things that you agree with, but overall it's an act. Now I'm saying, I do know that radio and television and, and even podcasts to an extent are, are, have to be entertaining. There's no doubt about that. I can't listen to somebody who's boring and, or somebody who's got an annoying voice. Michael Savage has an annoying voice. But one of the things that bothers me about him which I've never been able to listen listen to, is, is that he is a typical uh, New Yorker. Sorry, New Yorkers, if you're listening to this. I love a lot of you, but he's your typical loudmouth, uh, I'm going to command by being loud, and don't worry about what I know, just I'm going to walk all over you, and that's how. that's why you should listen to me. That's Michael Savage. Very annoying. And uh, I've always thought it was an act. I've always felt as though Michael Savage was an act. Now, I've heard things in the background from somebody else that has known Michael Savage for a long time. I heard this uh, earlier in the year, actually, uh, in February, I believe it was. I just happened to have a conversation. I was in St. Louis. I spoke, and I was with two other individuals and one of them who's known and worked around Michael Savage for the majority of his career and the stuff that he was saying about him I was like wow that's interesting it was not good at all none of it was good but I didn't I didn't talk about that because I, I didn't have a way of verifying a lot of stuff it's very personal and bad but today he goes on Twitter because Rush Limbaugh today uh discuss the fact that his cancer is a terminal illness and he will die from this and I didn't get to hear it but I heard it was amazing and the fact is it's Rush Limbaugh's show he can say whatever he wants on his show and if he wants to come out and pour his heart out you know that's that's his prerogative and I didn't see or hear from anyone that listens to his show that it was bad nor would anybody say that because, again, it's Russia's show. He can say what he wants. But Michael Savage, who's a jealous little bitch, comes on Twitter and says, and I quote, Limbaugh's crying about his cancer on air, exclamation mark. Worst 15 minutes in radio history, exclamation mark. Spilled a large coffee all over counter and floor. In, in caps, I promise my audience this, I will never... I will not drag you down with me, exclamation mark. Best wishes, Rush, but stop and leave the stage with dignity. What an ass. And that goes to show you, folks, that you cannot, no, let me, re let me rephrase that. You can judge a book by their cover if you find something odd about them. Now, not everybody that's odd is going to be bad. I've met a lot of people out there um, that are very odd in television and radio, but they are extremely knowledgeable, extremely knowledgeable. And some of those people are very intelligent, but a lot of them, I would have, I would have to say the majority of them are actors and actresses. 
And just like those fools at CNN that were practicing like it was a Broadway play on how they're going to handle this stuff and basically choreographing, choreographing, they're going to go and repeat all the nonsense that they came up with. Not that it's fact, but that's their act. Somebody like Michael Savage and, and Jeffrey Tubin and these types of people, well, they're just actors and people follow them blindly. So I hope this I hope this goes to show you and why you should be looking at this stuff. Again, I always try to look beyond the headlines. And yes, the headline about Jeffrey Tubin is that he was masturbating and got caught on Zoom during a Zoom meeting, which you know, if you don't have any more self control than that, you <clears throat> probably shouldn't be doing anything in the public's eye. Okay, that that's a huge headline. His career is done, should be done. Who knows? Nowadays with CNN, he may be back, you know, in a week or in a month, but because they're all full of weirdos and perverts over there. But again, I, I looked beyond that, and what struck me was beyond the headline. That's why you have to look beyond these headlines. I looked at it, and I saw the reality of, of what, what they were doing at the time of him getting caught, and that's that they were choreographing uh, their leftist political play that they play out every day for the nation to see. And people call it fake news. Yes, it is fake news, but it's choreographed. That's the thing that you have to see. That's the headline behind the headlines. Now, <clears throat> as far as Savage goes, don't think that I didn't let him have it because I did. And and quite frankly, it's one of the most ratioed statements I've ever seen on Twitter. People are just crushing it, killing it. They're, they're going off. They're going to, uh, as Gretchen uh, Whitmer would say, they're going to 86 them, right? Uh, if you don't know the story, Gretchen Whitmer gave some kind of speech. She's the governor of Michigan, total idiot. And she was talking about Trump and this and that, of course, as always, that's all they talk about. And she had something back behind her. It said 8645, which those of you that have ever worked in the restaurant business, 86 means that, you know, we're out of it or kill it, <clears throat> get it off the menu. It's not on the menu. And uh, so the Trump administration was saying that that was a sign uh, <clears throat> that they were signaling uh, that the president should be assassinated. And I don't know if that's what their goal is in that, but uh, it's distasteful like everything else that they do. So the other thing that I want to get into here before I uh, touch on the Hunter Biden laptop, which is <clears throat> it's very important, but as you see, there's always a headline behind the headline. But uh, Fox's um, Mark Thiessen, you always see him on, on Fox News. He's another one. You know, when I go look at these individuals on, uh, I go look them up, Wikipedia or whatever, you go look at their bios, th there's nothing there. A lot of times they're a fellow of this or a fellow of that. But there's, there's nothing, there's nothing there. Now, when he, he was making these remarks today, this is the thing that stands out to me is that he is a political analyst, right? They make these people out to sound like they have some incredible experience, which, which their opinion matters, or that they know something that the president doesn't know that. You know, for instance, when they brought Harry Halk and I out on CNN or I'd go on Fox to talk about military stuff or with Harry to talk about law enforcement stuff, they would bring us out there because we knew more than the other people that were there because they'd never been in law enforcement or in military. So we could come out and analyze this stuff with, without, you know, without a slant. We would give the facts and a true analysis from an experienced level. Well, people, you know, like... Uh, Mark Thiessen, he has no experience in anything. So he's going to give you, he's a, he's a paid analyst and he's a, he's a paid actor. So when he gives this opinion, it's based on politics as usual. And what these people don't realize, and, and there's some of the things that I, I agree with him in, in this, I have been saying that the president needs to speak to the people in these debates and let Joe Biden bury himself. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even acknowledge Joe Biden except when he's lying and I would point that out and say that is a lie. I mean his lies are predictable. You could sit and rehearse his lies and know what he's going to say 
and point out the facts. They could already have those prepared and memorized. But people need the president needs to speak to the people. I do say that, and I agree with Mark Thiessen when he kind of talks about that. And I do agree from the perspective of a voter and a conservative, a constitutionalist, originalist, that I want to hear from the president. I don't. I don't really care uh, in these debates anymore. It's all biased. They're all ran by leftists. Uh, everybody knows that you're not going to get any type of honest uh, moderation out of these uh, weirdos from the mainstream left media. And I think that in agreeing with Mark Thiessen, as you'll hear, you know, the president needs to speak to the people. I agree with that. <clears throat> but even that is not politics as, as usual. We've gotten to a point in this country where if you're a conservative politician and you're going for a debate, you might as well forget about those people. That is not politics as usual. You know, there's always been an act of banter between the Republicans and the Democrats and the media. Well, now it's, it's vicious. It's actually, <clears throat> it's, it's a real uh, threat to any type of real leadership. They're not interested in that. Not that it would ever happen, but I would almost guarantee if, if a real leader ever came out of the Democrat Party, which is never going to happen because it's a leftist, communist, Marxist, globalist organization, satanic organization. It's never going to happen. But let's just say that it did somehow, some way. The media would crush them because the media is not concerned with real leaders. It's not going to happen out of the Democrat Party. But listen to what, uh, what I keep wanting to call him uh, something else. But uh, Mark Thiessen, let's, let, I want you to hear just part of what he has to say. Of it. We should get to the bottom of the allegations, too. But this is something that the president of the United States needs to understand and the Republican Party needs to understand. This election is not going to turn on Hunter Biden. OK, this election is not going to turn on big tech covering up a Hunter Biden story. This is not the closing argument that Donald Trump wants to make in his last two weeks. It's not what he should be talking about. Now, I just totally disagree with him on that. The majority of the American people do want to hear about this. They want to hear the reality. And I think the American people want to hear why this is being allowed to occur and what the president's going to do in the next four years to get rid of the problem within the FBI and the DOJ. So far, there's been, you know, the president can say, lock this person up, lock that person up. And as he is, is Mark Thiessen's going to explain in his mind, because again, he doesn't fully understand the issue because he has no experience in this area. Uh, he doesn't understand the veracity of the problem and how much Americans want people to be arrested and go to jail for the stuff that they do in Washington, D.C. That's why the one of the reasons why the president got elected in the first place and the president says things like today he said you know as mark Deason will point out he yelled at the uh, media and he yelled at a reporter and he said stuff about joe biden he said how they should all be locked up and then he went on to say that uh biden's lucky that Barr hasn't gone after him but th the president should realize and this is again where i disagree with Thiessen, is that this is important to the people but what the president needs to realize is that we want action. And we know that Bill Barr is not going to take action. He hasn't take action, taken any action since he's been in office. He and Christopher Ray are, they don't even consider Antifa a terrorist organization. There, there's a real, there's a problem with that. And it shows the reality of this is what the American people want to hear about. I would love to hear the president, and I think it would win massive votes if he calmly described the reality of Washington, D.C. to the people and said, this is why we have not been able to get charges on Hillary Clinton or Hunter Biden or Joe Biden because they're protected by the swamp. And, and as I've explained, and uh, if you get a chance, you can go to the to. Uh, the Gateway Pundit and search my name or just put in Jonathan Gillum Gateway Pundit and my article that I wrote uh, and was published Friday will come up and you'll understand how I feel about uh, this cabal that runs Washington, D.C. and is filtered into all the state and local governments. But it's a tree, not a swamp. And it's a tree trunk with many very specific limbs of the media, big money donors, activists, all demonically influenced 
and the people, the voters that back the president, we want to hear why Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, the Clintons, Obama, all these people who unmask and did all these different things. Why was that allowed to happen? And two, why no arrests have happened? McCabe is not in jail. Comey is not in jail. Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, not in jail. Never even come close to being charged. Why is it that the, the OIG, the Office of Inspector General of the DOJ, can do a report on whether or not somebody has done something guilty when if you and I did it, we would be arrested. There's no report. They arrest you. They do a preliminary investigation. If there's enough evidence to arrest you, they will, or they'll carry out a case on you and not tell you. But either way, you're going to end up getting arrested. There's not going to be a report that's going to be written. Not when something as grave as what they have done has occurred. And if real investigation would would just jump right out. So that's what the American people want. Despite what this political pundit says, let's listen to what else he has to say. Their, their Gallup poll shows that 56% of Americans say they're better off now than they were four years ago under Obama Biden. But the RCP average shows only 42% plan to vote for Donald Trump. Okay, he talks really fast, which is another way that these people on television try to make themselves sound smart. They talk really fast, they talk really loud, and they interrupt and they just get, and, they, and, and somehow that's believable for some people. I, I don't, it's not believable for me. And here's a guy that is using the same polls that were 180 degrees out from reality four years ago, and he's using those polls to tell the president on what he should do, what the people think, not by analyzing the people. He's analyzing the polls, which we know these polls and where they're, where they're taken are mostly in liberal areas. And even if they do it in a conservative area or on phone or however they do it, nobody conservative answers those questions. Very few people. And let me tell you, if there's, as he'll say, listen to this. So that's a gap of about 14% of the electorate that is doing better because of Trump's policies, likes his policies, but are not happy with him personally. He needs to spend the last two weeks focused on winning those people over. Everything he says. So a lot of people I know that were mad at Trump about the, the COVID statements that he made after he got it and miraculously was healed. Does anybody else realize that? I had COVID. It lasted a month. Everybody I know that had COVID, it lasted a month, and we've had terrible side effects from it. I mean, unless you're one of the lucky few, you're not lucky few, probably the, the masses, the majority of people who didn't get a heavy viral load, uh, and they had a little bit of a virus, which is the other thing they don't talk about is the reality of whether or not you get antibodies is probably determined on the amount of virus that you had in your body to begin with. There is such a thing as called viral load. So let's say you come in contact with somebody. This is why washing your hands is so important, not just wearing a mask. But if you come in contact with somebody or someplace where the virus is at and you immediately wash your hands and change your clothes, you're less likely to get a huge viral load. So you're not going to be as sick, most likely. Uh, that, of course, is dependent on age and your health and, and everything else. But uh so somehow that just completely disappeared uh, off of the radar. The president was healed basically in a week. Does anybody not realize that? Am I the only one that realizes that the president looked like he was on the edge of death and a week later he's not sick at all anymore? Same thing with Barron and I, everybody else. What, what about everybody else that was in the White House? Are they all magically healed as well? And, and what is this magical thing that, that they took and why isn't it being talked about on, on everything, media, by these governors who want to lock down everything? None of them are talking about that. I know what the, the medicines are, but you don't hear anybody talking about it. Cuomo, the murderer, the, the, he is the most psychopathic person I've, I personally have ever witnessed in my lifetime. He is, he won't even talk about like he should be asking if he if he really cared and thought that he wanted to cure stuff. This is really your litmus test. Has any of them said, how did the president get well in a week? Why don't we try that and give that to everybody? You're not going to hear that from these people because it's a game for them. So getting back to uh, Mark Thiessen. Every argument he makes should be focused on trying to convince those people to give him a second term. because of So see, this is what 
political pundits, this is, this is how they think. The president should be doing things to get votes. But the president wasn't elected four years ago because he did things to get votes. He was elected by the American people because he was a man who talked about results. He's the guy who said what we felt. And he was the guy who said, who, who literally gave us examples of how he was going to solve the problems, which a lot of them he has, but the people now four years later, they don't want to hear him kiss an ass. They want to hear how he's going to fix the things that he hasn't and how he's going to deal with the problems that we have now. That's what they want to hear. Mark Thiessen. I'm sorry. Sorry to burst your bubble, but that's the reality of how the American conservatives think. Forgettable votes. Talking about Hunter Biden. They don't care about Hunter Biden. They don't care about. Wrong. That's very wrong. People are very concerned about the reality that Hunter Biden, this is what I was going to get into next, that Hunter Biden dropped his computer off at a computer lab in April of 2019. The FBI was then in uh, in possession of the hard drive, a copy of the hard drive, and then the computer by July of 2019. So over a year and while uh, the Russian hoax was still in play, the, the FBI had this computer, Christopher Ray. This was not Comey. This is Christopher Ray, and they did nothing about it. That is alarming to me and other conservative voters, even the people who were mad at the president for things that he said. They are very concerned with this because not only, not only is the, the stuff that's within those computers very important because it's very damning to Joe Biden, but also... But also, it's very damning to the FBI and the DOJ. See, these are things that the empowered conservatives want to hear. This is how you win the conservative uh, vote. And I would go as far to say as that if you were to talk to moderate liberals, that they would see this as well. So again, you're wrong. Mark Thiessen, you are, this is, you're talking about politics is normal. This is not a normal day and age. This, they care about the economy and they care about not having four more years of chaos. Those are the things that are a little. Yeah. Yeah, we care about that. We care about that. But when you're talking, when the president talks to the American people, the American people want to understand what is going on about this. What is the truth about the coronavirus? You know, I would love to hear the president tell me the truth. Uh, I'm not saying that he that he lied in the beginning. What I'm saying is it needs to be pointed out clearly we still, I mean, he's the president. If he thinks Fauci is wrong, you know, this is where Ross Perot would have came in, would have done a great job. You come out there with a chart and you show everybody this simple, Mr. President, this simple. And anybody who ever listens to this that has anything to do with this campaign, it's this simple, okay? You take a chart of of all of the infection that we've known of in this country, and you show how it went skyrocketing as they put COVID-positive patients into elderly clinics, and then how it dipped way down when when they stopped doing that, and then it skyrocketed when they started opening states, okay? You take that chart, and then you overlay it, with the death rate chart. And what you see is that a tremendous amount of death occurred when they started putting COVID positive patients in elderly clinics. And then it dove way down when they stopped doing that. And then it never really went back up. And all of the death that we have had from COVID has primarily been associated with elderly and primarily the biggest numbers associated with the elderly clinics. But President Trump is, I mean, I love you, but point that out. It's it's that simple. Pull a couple charts out. Show us. Not, not that you're lying to us, but simplify it. Tell us, tell everybody, this is the reality of the numbers. The numbers are there. And it's... It's nothing, it's nothing bad that you should suppress. The people should know this stuff. See, the people, the reason why they voted for Trump, as I said before, is because they want somebody to look them in the eye and tell them the truth. 
That is it. You don't have to play the political game like Mark Thiessen talks about. You don't have to do, you don't have to yell and scream. You don't have to act like Joe Biden and, and you don't have to have all these people protect you like the media does. Just look us in the eye, simplify it as much as possible and tell us the truth. And then say, this is what I'm working towards. It's that simple. If I was the president and I was in this circumstance, I would look at the American people and say, we've done amazing things. Some things we haven't been able to do. Many things we've been blocked from doing. But here's what I'll promise you. I'll continue pushing forward. And this is the reality of COVID. And this is the reality of the corruption of the FBI and the DOJ and the OIG. And this is the corruption of the Democrat Party. And this is the corruption, the reality of the corruption with the establishment Republicans. That that's I would that's what I'd point out and say, I'm with you. We have four more years. Four more years, and then I'm gone. And then it's going to be up to you all to pick a suitable candidate then. That's what you should be worrying about. I mean, that's the way I look at the president. We have four more years with him if we get him in office. Four more years, despite the media, four more years of someone being in office that is not going to break anything, and four more years of somebody in office that understands the problems, and four more years of someone in office that is striving to make things better. Not, not just make things better, but to work out the problems that we have with effective solutions. I mean, that's what the American people want to hear. I'm sorry, Mark Deason, that, but, I'm, but you're wrong on this one. You're absolutely wrong. The, the people, the people do want to hear about Joe Biden's laptop. The people do want to hear about the reality of how corrupt the cabal is, that family tree of treason and sedition that permeates Washington, D.C. We do want to hear about that. I think it's more important than ever. Now, just a couple other things I want to touch on real quick. Um, this, I, this, I can't. I used to say this all the time in media, right? When I was on in 2014, 2015, actually 2013 to 2016, when I was big on the news and uh, when I was on Sirius a lot and stuff, what I would always hammer home was the fact that when I'm switching gears here a little bit, but still the same, is that when it comes to terrorism, which happened last week in France where a teacher was beheaded because she was saying something about Islam. You see, they don't, they don't say Islam. They say, uh, they call them extremists or radicals on drudge report. It says France vows to root out extremists. Let's see that who was saying that that's, um, let's see which group, which, uh, there it is. This is what publication is this? This is the the oh the Wall Street Journal. They refer to uh, Islamic terrorists as Islamic extremists, right? But when you look at the Drudge Report and you look at the very next story, which I just close it out. Let me pull it right back up here. Uh, you look at the very next story. Okay, so this is the way it goes down. It says um, ISIS uh, magazine publishes photo of French teacher's head calls for more attacks. And then the next one from the Wall Street Journal, that the the headline is, remember, Gr Drudge is an aggregate of different uh, publications. The next headline says, France vows to root out extremists. Then the very next headline uh, that is from The Guardian says, revealed uh, chaining, beatings, torture inside Sudan's Islamic schools. Not <laughs> not radical schools not extremist schools those are islamic schools okay so the, the media this is what they do they utilize either disinformation or they change titles and they make things seem and you see this in religious zealots as well there's many different uh i wouldn't even call them christian 
uh, denominations because the reality is that they're they're not Christian. They don't follow the teachings of Christ. They think they tell people they have to have elders tell them uh, what they should do and say, uh, and that they should turn away from the Bible and concentrate on other writings or, or the interpretation of other people to tell you what God actually says in the Bible. That's not true Christianity. Um, but they will do the same thing. They will say, no, no, this comma and this sentence with that comma in the middle means this, not that. And they'll take things and they'll twist them a little bit, which in this case, they go from Islamic uh, fundamentalist, which is the reality of, of who's doing these terrorist attacks, which by and large have disappeared since President Trump was in office. I don't know if you realize that. But they rename them extremists or Islamic uh, uh, radicals. Well, it's fundamental. It's not extreme. It's not. Uh, it, it's not radical. It's fundamental. <clears throat> but that's the way that they work. Um. So I think I'm going to call it there for the day, because this is the reality of today's show. Anyway, when you watch the news or you listen to talk radio or you go on Twitter and you see these political pundits or quote unquote experts who want to tell the president how he should be doing things or tell you how you should vote or the reality of what's happening in the world. Don't forget to look at who the, these people actually are. You know, this Jeffrey Tubin incident that happened, one of the most important things that have come out of that that most people are not focusing on is not necessarily what he did, it's what they were doing when he did it. They were having a meeting to rehearse how they do the news. That is called acting, and that's what they do. I'm Jonathan Gillum. This is The Experts. The truth has arrived. Peace, and I'm out of here.